Onigashimasu, welcome back to the Gojuri Karate Center. So, what did I bring back from Okinawa besides for presents and um, interesting things uh, for my family? We came back with a little bit of an insight into how Sensei Kikugawa would like us to perform kata in particular. So, if you do karate a different way and you train in a different dojo, a different federation, a different lineage, a different whatever, always revert back to what your sensei would ask you to do. So do what your sensei says. If you're not into kata, if you're into MMA and fighting in the octagon, this video is not for you. This video is for people who are trying to analyze and study kata and more importantly, acts as a historical document for my dojo in particular and my students, my direct students, who are looking at the changes that might be coming into their kata slightly so that they can improve and get to the same standardized level. All right, everything is going to be done reasonably slow, nothing too fast, and we're going to get started straight away. So, I think let's start with Sanchen Kata and with Tensho Kata. These katas need to be done, and all kata need to be done a lot more slowly. Emphasis must be placed on finishing each and every single movement. In terms of the pattern of the kata, there is nothing that has changed from the way that we generally do our kata. So, if we start with Sanchen, On the next move, make sure that you bring your hands all the way out and then down. So. When you do these movements, close your hands, then turn, pull, open, out, turn. So make sure that you're not rolling in like we used to do. Just close, turn and pull, open, out, and turn. Step back, a little bit more emphasis on that portion instead of that way. A little bit more scooping across the bottom of the tummy and out. We're gonna deal with Mahashuke in a little while. Lower, not up as high, and down, and that's going to be a general train throughout your kata. Sanjan kata is the kehon of Gojuri karate, and as such can be broken up and trained a lot more. So if you wanted to do 50 punches here because you're feeling unbelievably strong, that is a-okay. If you wanted to do 30 of these, it's a-okay. Generally speaking, the kata, three steps forward. On the third step, there will be five punches, which means you will stop on the left. One of those, three times pull, two times mawashi uke, and then finish. Okay, do not rush the cutter. The same thing will apply in tensho, and in tensho the breathing will be slightly different. So breathe in and out as usual. The start is the same, in, out, in and out. Step through, in, out, in and out. And on the third step, in, 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 out. And this is where we're going to start talking about things that we need to consider when we're doing the cut. So don't speed up your hands because you run out of air. So don't go. Try and keep the hand movements slow and build your lung volume. So it's best to do.
and on the end of the movement, tighten. And then, and down. Okay, and that's gonna be uniform through the whole kata. Short movements, I tend to change the timing of tensho as well quite a lot, but when you're doing grading, keep the movement as generic as possible. Don't change the timing, keep it slow. So breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. When you do the two hands, the only time the arms cross is on the very first movement. So cross the arms there, stop. Now don't cross the arms again. Don't even let your fingers touch. Stop. Out. Stop. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Hands. A lot of the time people just do this. Try to get those hands further out and down. Further out and down further over here from gigs at a knee try and get it's very hard that as soon as i'm stopping i'm trying to my hands will be a little bit behind a little bit delayed a little bit delayed but not massively and down and round and back okay so the kata is going to have a more generic in out breathing pattern and we're not going to overemphasize differences of breathing long in short in short out long out we're not going to jump through since it chin five types of breathing moving on to gex at edge this is now where we start working for the children we want to finish each movement so the bow as we've done announce the kata yoi Make sure finish first step more straight face punch on target and 45. So we used to do this block very, very close to the body and finishing with something that looked like that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go on a plane over here a little bit more and block the elbow. Is still leading the technique all right so the elbow still leading the technique and the thumb will finish just behind the knee all right so if you're high up it's going to be a little bit above the knee but behind the knee if you low down it's going to be just behind the knee all right and finish there and a good chamber i'm not, i don't want to go through the mirror in out step Straight step, 45. To the front, one. Make sure that you don't rush and that you don't neglect the back foot. So, one, two. Finish each technique in the next five movement combination. One, two, three, four, five. Finishing every single technique properly. The next movement depends where you train. If the sensei allows stomping of the feet and if the floor or surface is good for stomping, right now we have to tie me down, it's okay, stomping is good. If your sensei doesn't allow you to stomp on the wooden floor because people are making holes in it, then don't stomp. So <laughs> it depends what the sensei wants, okay? We're going to have foot sweep stomp strike i was bad i don't know if you saw what i did make sure it's one hand only we need to try and move away from doing this with two hands like we've done for so many years all right i'm going to face the camera step through one block so make sure that this is happening not this okay so 
through cover block, center side, elbow, two, three, four, stomp, we're all going to have to work on the stomping action, try not to lift your foot like this please, next concept that is going to carry through is going to be the moment the leg is grounded, the hands must both be in the chamber. And it's going to carry through to a few places. So, one, two. One, two. Finish. Two, three, four, and five. So, these concepts that we're going to carry through Number one, if it's a blocking technique, in out stepping. If it's an attacking technique, more straight stepping. Concept number two, in Shikodachi, Dodamba Rise, a 45 degree plane. We do this quite a few times in more of our advanced cutter. So that concept is going to carry through into the advanced cutters. Finish every movement, don't rush. Later on, maybe you get towards the really advanced cutters, there's a whole sequence of movements, and everybody tends to rush them. Finish each and every move. All right, uh, chambering the hands as the foot grounds. This is gonna be an important concept. It's gonna pop up in Dexedony and Cypher straight away. You'll find it happening there. Stomp where you can. If the dojo allows for foot stomping, great. But please be careful. Mind your own uh, body. Don't hurt yourself. Uh, you want to do karate for a long time. Uh, I think that pretty much covers what happens at Geeks at Edge. So at Geeks at Edge, we've got everything that Geeks at Edge has got. We're going to add in another section of timing. So, and again, it's a common concept. Sometimes when we have three techniques, what we're going to have is slow, medium, fast. So I'm going to go through that again. Now the difficulty here is to try and have the feet moving in out. So in out on slow, no problem. In out, in out. Finish each technique. Kick as you land. Become fists. Two, three, four, five. Okay. Stomp. When we get to the end of the cutter, What's the key concept here? As I get to my cat stance, my hands are in the chamber. So exactly like X at H at the same place. As soon as I get to my stance, my hands are in the chamber. Slide the hands out. And out. Turn to the front. And down. Now, I tend to teach Mawashi Uke palm lining up with the hip palm lining up with the shoulder that's what i tend to do and the emphasis press out the thumb press out the pinky don't let the fingers open keep them in keep everything neat and tidy the next important thing is that when you're on 45 what tends to happen is that people tend to do this and when they turn to the front this hand is suddenly on the center and this hand has kind of drifted a little bit Let's try and keep it in the exact same place. How do we work towards doing the complicated stepping and wash you get to finish here? My suggestion is the following. Break it down as such. One, two, three. So the hands are going to start sooner and the legs are going to move slower. One, two, three. Four. One more thing with Mawashuke, lock out at the end, which means press the arms so that the elbows rotate and that you can tighten, but don't lock the arm. That's kind of weird. Okay, the arms are actually bent, they're not fully straight, they're bent, but we need to get to the point where the elbows press past the body and then they are pinned by the body. So, one, two, three, and finish. And one, two, three, and finish. 
turn to the front one two three four okay so that's pretty much the concept that you're going to need for gig side dining if you want to watch any of the actual videos as we've done them in the past it's super important to go back to our other videos i'm not doing the cutters and redoing all the videos at the same time as doing this we'll be here for hours all right our key concepts in cipher and again we're going to take the concepts from sunshine tensho gixit edge gixit and e and some of them are going to come through into the cutter so things that we had from the previous trip that our seniors undertook about two years ago um, is that i'm going to do it sideways is that hurricane tends to be at a slight angle no longer perfectly beautiful vertical but slight angle and a lot of emphasis on that wrist okay so that's still the same okay and we started working towards that leading up to Kikagawa Sensei's visit in Johannesburg and Cape Town last December and pretty much the same thing we did cipher a couple of times but nothing major the one or two key concepts that came out okay so the same 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 biggest change this hand must rub on the inside of the arm so rubs there so this is the kind of feeling you want it's a full block and this is a half a block as you step in and we're going to be looking to the side kick move looking to the side kick look forward okay so lots of things happening on this one one oopsie let me try and keep my balance so one kick look forward foot touches hands chamber what tends to happen lots of students do out back this is no good all right we want to make sure kick chamber out as soon as the foot is grounded the hands are chambered split second after out bottom of the hands top of the shoulders so not perfectly parallel to the floor slightly up center don't make this into a massive movement but also don't make it too small center the next concept that we're going to have is the idea of touch and go on a cross step so as we do touch and go foot's going to touch the body is automatically going to pivot this is something you have to work on i'm changing direction so you can see what I, the hands are going to do so touch go closed open closed double punch so two three four touch go one don't get into the habit of one two three one two three finish each technique cipher in particular it's a very short cutter and what tends to happen is you rush it from after the kicks and then the cutter just becomes a mess towards the end control the timing of the cutter finish each technique properly okay now hammer first plus stomp if the dojo allows for it you stomp when we step through shoulder height so basically parallel to the floor okay so that will take us to the back step turn pull and what you want to do is try ground yourself by turning on this leg so step notice i step into one line so that this leg pulls in a straight line and pull finish the technique so here you're not going to be at this point when the leg comes in this is the technique that finishes as the leg comes in this comes after out 
two, not too high, three, four, and five. All right, so you can see the core concepts coming through from Gixit Edge, Gixit and E into Cypher, and they'll continue into say in Genesis Sortion and so on. The idea is that we came home with concepts, not with specific corrections most of the time. Okay, so I am very guilty in Thayunshin of doing this movement a variety of different ways, which can be very, very annoying for some of my seniors, some fellow karate instructors, and for some of my students. So, one, two, three, and we were training, Kikagawa Sensei, just turn, just turn. Um, Masuda Sensei, turn on the axis from the index finger to the wrist, like this. I'm going to come a bit closer so you can see my hand a bit better. Turn from here to here, kind of, if this is staying put, just turn. Don't drop the hands. Don't do this. Also, don't do this. Just turn. How to train this. So, all right, Brian. Finally, Brian gets to be in the video. Hi, Obigashimas. Excuse his ill fitting gi. We, we gave Brian a generic plain gi today. So, all right. We're going to grab right to right. One. And we're not doing bunkai. So, if you're watching this section and you're going, oh, you know, that will never work in the street. This is not bunkai. This is to facilitate developing the technique the way Sensei wants it. One. Keep the elbow in. Two, circle, turn, and how would you grab? So how do I get my hand there? And then I'm obviously going to pull. All right, let's go on the other hand, please, Brian. So elbow in. Don't let the elbow bop out and the shoulder drop. Okay, no power from this person. It's just facilitation of angles. That's all it is. One. Turn from the index finger to the hand there, and how would my hand grab on? Okay, I like working off of this because it means the hands are in the correct position. It also means that we can concentrate on the facilitation part, not we're defending ourselves against a punch. And two. Hey. This concept is going to appear later on in several other kata, especially the advanced kata. So, Seiyunshin is going to be different from Superimpe. As this happens here, this hand is going to come to the chamber. It is not crossing in front. Seiyunshin, one, two, and together. All right, so let's go through the opening movement. So from the yoi, one, under, and slightly higher. Not under the chin, in front of, let's say, the nose. And I'm physically trying to put my nose on my fingertips. Make fists, keep the elbows in, and pull down. When you do this, you're going to find that as your hands come down, they're going to be able to run knuckle to knuckle, and then you're going to open up. So you're going to have this uh, hand movement. And the plane you're going to end up with is going to be that 45 plane we did in Gix at Edge. So the concept continues. Open, round. One, turn, two. So we're going to step through. Same thing. Up, down, round, turn, and together. I'm just going to match feet. All right, up, down, up, turn, together. Place the hand on, nothing fancy. Doesn't have to be a fancy turn. Just put the hand on top of the other hand. In, out, and straightforward zuki. Straightforward punch. No funny kinks of the elbow. Naturally extended. Front to knuckles, solar plexus. The triangle, I'm going to use my left hand, that is created between the knuckle, the wrist over here, and the thumb. This flat plane 
of hand. That's where your other hand's going to be on. So the side, this is the side I'm going to be doing, hand's going to be on. Do not let your hand be in front of the punch. The punch is in front, the hand is behind creating support. The elbow, just kink it, tuck it underneath, okay? So don't tuck it out, just tuck it underneath. So we're here, one, two, three. Finish, this hand doesn't have to move. Pull back, drive the elbow parallel to the floor. Okay, hand finishes basically on top and together. Raise the hand up, turn and press down. On the next couple of movements, there is a beginner's way and there's an advanced way. The beginner's way and the way you should learn is get umber eye, get umber eye. So you should get one, get umber eye, get umber eye. Slightly more advanced way or the advanced way is press down with this hand and more of a hammer fist. It still finishes in the exact same place. It's just the hand tends to chop down a bit more. It's smaller movement and a complete 45 degree angled block finishing behind the knee once again. So that's going to take us to here. We're going to fetch this at the center. So from here, fetch it at the center and press down. And again, beginner, get umber eye, get umber eye. Intermediate uh, or advanced, you're going to do hammer fist, get umber eye. So you're going one, two. The next movement, don't rush, slow, stop. Slow, stop. The next move is more of a straight step than it is an in-out step and it has a slight curve to it but it's more straight all right so for years taught round a little bit more straight and direct and the hands don't open up to create power for this it's a common mistake a common problem so make sure one finish on your center line hand in the front the only foot sweep we practice this is not uh uniform through ogkk our line of ogkk this is the only foot sweep in the kata followed by the shift and the uriken all right if you come from onaga sensei's group you will practice two foot sweeps okay so my friends who are in south america who fit in under onaga sensei all right, we're aware that there are subtle differences between what the senseis are teaching. One, two, three. As I land, or again, don't bring this in to take it out. Just shift forward, and as you land from the wrist, hit the hurricane. Okay? Touch, go, stop. So finish the technique. I'm going to do it as if I was doing the kata and that's the front. I'm going to end up 45 that way. So we're going to get one, two, three, four. Finish the technique. And again, like Cypher, this arm rubbing through the elbow. Where do my hands finish? Front of my leg, good, get under eye. Front of my body, elbow locked out. So finish the technique, lock out the arms at this position. Then step three, one, two, three, four. Finish each technique. Avoid this kind of dribble. Try and finish, stop, stop, stop stop before you move on again it's a common theme from kikagawa sensei don't rush your kata finish each technique sit on the back leg elbow elbow the same concept going to that side move to the front one two 
this arm don't raise it up to hit from here hit hit from here and it's that wrist we're looking for not the arm not the arm the wrist the reason why only the wrist you're moving into your opponent so you're moving in arms out to about here at its maximum and then directly up touch those elbows here's the concentration drop and settle please do not drop your hands do not extend them fully outward we want our arms to go up and round touch and go and the easiest way to understand this is if you've ever swum butterfly that kind of motion you're going to struggle to swim butterfly with your hands up there okay <laughs> i know some people can do it but you're going to struggle you really want to get your hands out and in front of you and it's like they're being held by somebody so brian can i use you for a second please so imagine Brian is in shot. We are here. Brian, one hand per hand, just holding on to my hands. And it's like my hands have been left behind. So this is creating this idea of around here. Okay? I don't want you to bring your hands in and then up. I want the idea of your hands going here. Okay, thanks, Brian. So it's kind of like your hands are stuck there and then you're dropping into this position so and again it's like kicks kicks at a knee and uh, kicks at an itch by the time we get into the stance we really want to be starting to just getting to the end of the technique without rushing it so we don't want this we don't want this we don't want this we don't want this we really just want as I settle into my stance my hands are settling to finish three four and five okay so I think we're gonna end this video about here and this caters to the vast majority of beginner and intermediate students in the Gorjuru Karate Center and the people who kind of follow me directly these are the concepts we got to affect our karate and this video is very much for you it's very much in-house video if you're outside and you like what we're showing great leave a comment if it's different from what you do in your dojo in your federation in your in your branch your style then always go back to your sensei and do what your sensei does and what your sensei says listen to them you're following them a very interesting point of conversation with one of the senior students in Kikagawa Sensei's dojo, the dojo. Um, and we were talking about you know that there are so many differences and the senior said to us you need to understand that everybody comes from somewhere different sometimes in as an outsider to visit the dojo and sensei is cognizant that everybody else has had a different sensei. Not everybody is an immediate, direct, 100% student of Kikagawa Masanari Sensei. Not everybody. There are a handful of people who can claim to be that. But by and large, most people who fall in underneath Kikagawa Sensei today and follow him have had an upbringing somewhere else. My upbringing is rather eclectic. We did training with Higaona Sensei, Chinin Sensei, Teruichi Sensei. When I was a child, we followed Chinin Sensei for a couple of years. We touched base with the people from Seiwakai. We trained with Tazaki Sensei. Then we bounced around. We trained with a man called Sensei Arnold De Beer, direct student of Sensei James Rousseau. So it's more a Higawana kind of line again. And he's. Uh, Hugh and Dennis St. John Thompson in the Capes, Karate Do in South Africa, and later on Miyazato Sensei, more Miyazato line uh, from uh, Sensei Ronnie. And then we moved across to Sensei Ilias and Sensei Lillian Katan. And they also have not 
And they're very dedicated, don't get me wrong, extremely dedicated, extremely loyal, to the point that their names hang in Sensei Kikagawa's dojo. So that's kudos to them for being of such a high um, loyalty that Sensei is willing to hang their name boards in his dojo. And so, you know, that's, that's, that's an absolute rarity. My name is not hanging in Sensei's dojo. Um, I have only trained in his dojo twice. I think I would have to make maybe 10 or 15 visits before it would be even considered. All right, with that, we're going to wrap up the karate you're doing. You try your best to make sure that you can adjust and adapt. The thumbprint of where you come from and the strongest thumbprint will always come out. Uh, during my grading, it was quite uh, common to hear the senior, the panels talking while we were going up one by one and Kikigawa Sensei acknowledging and pointing out these are students of Sensei Terry Ochin. These are students who have come from Chin and Sensei from Jindakan International at some point in our lives. So, you know, that's the power of the thumbprint that has been left on us by our seniors and our Sensei and our time spent with them. And we're now just tweaking and working towards trying to get more of Sensei Kikagawa's fingerprints because the thumbprint's already Sensei Chin. That's it for today. Arigato gozaimasu. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, click on the notification so you hear when we um, do our next video. Sayonara.